Hello, I'm Vicki Hogarth and welcome to Southwest Magazine. With the provincial election just around the corner, my guest today is working some of the longest hours in the province. Long before the candidates hit the campaign trail, Chief Electoral Officer Kim Poffenroth has been preparing for Election Day 2018 since she began her position in the spring of 2017. Poffenroth is responsible for ensuring that the election runs smoothly, not to mention legally, for both the voters and the candidates in all 49 writings. Not an easy feat in a time when things like fake news, data mining, hacker interference and social media campaigning have become new factors in the electoral process. I caught up with Poffenroth when she was recently in St. Andrews training employees of the Municipal Returning Office. She took time out of her busy schedule to sit down with me in the CHCO studio to talk about everything voters need to know before heading to the polls. Hi Kim, thank you for joining us on Southwest Magazine. Thank you for having me with you today, Vicki. So, I feel like it's fair to ask you, what is your job description? Yeah, I'm the Chief Electoral Officer and Supervisor of Political Finance and Elections, New Brunswick. We're res and basically I'm responsible for overseeing the elections, be they provincial, municipal, in New Brunswick, and also supervising the financing of the political process by the, by the parties. Now obviously, this election is coming to a close, so you must be very busy, but when did it start for you and get to where you're at now? Absolutely. We started actually preparing for this election 18 months before Election Day, back in March, April of 2017, right after I started on the job in March of 2017 and preparations were already underway then, preparing training materials, ordering supplies for all of the polling locations and returning offices all over the province. So it's it's a very long build up and preparation to to election day that people really don't have any real appreciation of how what amount of preparation goes into into being ready for election day. So you're overseeing 49 writings. Correct. What are the biggest challenges along the way from over a year ago to now? Um, logistics, getting all the people in place. You have to staff all of those returning offices. Um, find polling locations, find the returning office locations, hiring all the staff for the polling stations, the people that work on voting days. There's between four and 5,000 workers that work on for three days during the election. So that's, I'd say, some of the biggest logistical you know, challenges for Elections New Brunswick is making sure all those people are hired and trained and make the voting experience as easy as uh, possible when the the voters go into the, the polling stations. Uh, say somebody wanted to get involved in a working capacity or a volunteer capacity, where would they go to find out? Yeah, um, Elections New Brunswick website. We, the returning officers are appointed by a cabinet, but they're a, a government appointment. And then from there, the returning officer is responsible for hiring all of the staff in his or her office, as well as all the polling officials. So. You can go to the Elections New Brunswick website. There's a, a link if you're interested in working at an election. You can click on that. At this point, yeah, you know, everybody's been staffed and trained. But that's uh, that's w how you would go about. You can also go into the return once the returning office is open to the public, which in this election was uh, August 23rd. Okay, people can go in and get an application there and let the returning officer know. So at this point, all New Brunswickers are ready to vote, though. So how do you know if you're registered to vote? You can call our call center, one 858 vote mm -hmm. That's a call center where you can call in and check to see if you're on the voters list, mm -hmm. on the register of electors. Um, you can verify your information. Mm -hmm. You can also go into your local returning office. Every riding has a returning office. And we also have a, a, a satellite office on Grand Manan. Mm -hmm. So you can go into any of those offices and they can check for you to see if you're on the, the list. And to make sure your information is also up to date, you need to be at the right address, for example, so you know where you're supposed to vote. Okay. And what if you found out on election day that you weren't registered? What's the process like? Is it complicated or is no, it? No, it's really quite straightforward. You can do one of two things. On election day, if you find out, for example, when you actually go to vote, you can actually be added to the list of electors right when you go in to vote. So all you have to have with you is uh, any uh, ID, ID that includes three important things. Your name, your address, your civic address, not a mailing address, and your signature. And it could be one piece of ID, like your driver's license okay. would have all of that, or you can use any combination. For example, uh, a utility bill. Your power bill has your address on it, you, as long as you have those, and then you can be added to the voters list. And I just had a very rare experience with you at, um, at my writing here, um, where I had someone vouch for me because I'm very new to the province, so I don't even have mail 
that qualifies and I don't have a driver's license. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just a passport. So I had my boyfriend say that he is willing to uh, testify that I am me and I live here. Yeah. So that's something people can do too. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah, if you don't have those ID that has those three pieces of information, absolutely. It has to be someone who is an elector mm -hmm. in the same polling location as you would vote at, mm -hmm. and they just swear an oath that, yes, you are a qualified elector for that polling location. So mm -hmm. it's not just somebody who lives in the same riding, but it has to okay. be somebody who would live in the same polling location. So since the two of you lived at the same, same house. address, yeah. then, yeah, you're... I think he thinks we're married now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's, that's something I'll let the two of you sort out. <laughs> um, so you've done a push this election in particular with uh, bringing uh, university students into the vote, uh, making polling stations available at campuses. How has that changed specifically this time around? Yeah, absolutely. Or grown? Yeah. We started in 2010 uh, with a pilot project of having uh, polling locations on campus. Uh, we started with six campuses at four different locations in 2010. In 2014, we grew to 13 campuses, and now this year we're going to be at 18 university and community college campuses across the province. We'll be on campus, depending on the location, a larger campus like UNB mm -hmm. in Fredericton, for example, we're going to be there for a full week. Some smaller campuses, we might be there for one day, three days, and we're there the week before polling day, so between September 17th and September 21st, and just mm -hmm. depending on, so that's, uh, one of the things we've really grown that that part of our program yeah. to make voting far more accessible for uh, students and we're doing things to promote the program even more this year at some of our larger campuses we are for piloting a project of uh, election ambassadors mm -hmm. and those are people that we're helping the student unions hire individuals who are going to promote that we're going to be there. So they're responsible for putting up posters around campus, handing out bookmarks and pencils and letting their fellow students know Elections New Brunswick is going to be here so that you can vote. This is where they're going to be. This is when they're going to be here. So that's something new we're doing this year. And we have a, a youth outreach coordinator that we hired at Elections New Brunswick this year who's been coordinating a lot of that with the campuses and our returning officers because the returning officers are responsible for those those polling locations so we're really excited and we're hoping that with that you know level of presence mm -hmm. across the the province that it's going to pay dividends in mm -hmm. the uh, youth voter turnout well and looking at obama in 2008 and justin trudeau in canada the youth vote was a lot of people would say critical or the reason why um both of them won uh, why do you think though in new brunswick the youth vote has been historically quite low compared to the percentage I of voters otherwise. Yeah, I can honestly say I really, I don't know whether it's a lack of um, knowledge or awareness about the process, a lack of engagement um, in the democratic process. So something else we're doing to uh, increase, I guess, awareness of the democratic process and the importance of voting is we're actually starting with students even younger, even before they're uh, old enough to vote and hoping that that will uh, spill over to when they do turn 18, that mm -hmm. voting will be something they feel is just a natural part of being a Canadian citizen and a resident of New Brunswick. So uh, we have two programs I'm really excited about and really proud that we do here in New Brunswick. We allow, normally you have to be eligible to vote to work at the polls, mm -hmm. but we actually, our legislation allows 16 and 17 year olds to work in certain, um, certain jobs at the polls. So we've been working with our returning officers and the Department of Education and Early Childhood Development mm -hmm. to uh, engage with students that are 16 and 17 girls, basically kids that are in grade 11 and 12 mm -hmm. probably this year, and try and get them involved in working at the polls. And we're also working with a nonprofit organization out of Ottawa called Civics mm -hmm. to run a mock uh, election for children in grades 4 through 12. Um, they're going to, on election day, they're going to have the opportunity to vote for the candidates they are running in their riding. Mm -hmm. um, the results will be posted on the website after the real polls close. Um, they'll have access to, their teachers will have access to um, various 
educational resources so that students can learn about the parties and the candidates and what the issues are and learn about the, the democratic process itself. So at Elections New Brunswick, we're hopeful that that sort of engaging students before they're even old enough to vote so that we won't have to convince them to vote when they're 18. They'll just know, well, that's something that it's an important part of being a member of society and contributing and having your voice heard because that's really what we need to get out to students is that if you don't vote and, stu and students and other young people I mean whether they're students or not is if you don't get out and vote then you're leaving important decisions to other people mm -hmm. so that's I mean why people choose not to vote I think it's a maybe a bigger question beyond the because we can only provide information on you know how you how to vote yeah. where to vote when to vote make sure people are aware of those things and it's up to people like yourselves in the media the parties the candidates themselves to provide the motivation and the reasons why people should vote we try to make it as easy as possible and make sure everybody knows but there's there's a lot of other players in the uh, I say that take a part of the responsibility for engaging the the electorate to get out Oftentimes when I hear from people who say they're not going to vote, it's because they either think there's one candidate who's clearly going to win and maybe they were voting for that person but they feel their vote doesn't matter, or the opposite, they feel their candidate's going to lose so they don't bother. Do you have a response for, for s someone who, who feels it's a throwaway vote? I think every vote counts regardless of what the outcome is. It's your opportunity to participate in the democratic process. Mm -hmm. And it's that simple by having, you can at least have the I don't know, the pride in saying I contributed to my society, the most basic right of being a Canadian. I mean, a lot of, a lot of Canadians of previous generations sacrificed a lot so that today we can take voting for granted, but we shouldn't take it for granted. And is it true that if you vote for a party does it, and say they don't win, does it, a certain financial, I heard once that a dollar at least goes to that party, so you can think of it that way too, that your yeah. vote does support it in some way. Yeah, absolutely. There's the political, the parties in New Brunswick are, they're financed through a combination of donations from their supporters as well as government public funds. And the amount of money that every party gets, there's a, there's a, a set pool, a set pool of funds, mm -hmm. and the proportion that each party receives receives is based on the number of votes okay. they receive, and they, there's a certain yeah number of votes that they receive. So yes, by by voting for a party you support, mm -hmm. you're at least contributing to uh, to their financial resources, I guess. So there is there 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 are reasons beyond whether or not your candidate your candidate of choice gets elected. Um, are there any faux pas at the polls that people should know about? Um, for instance, is it a tick mark or a next? Does it matter? Justin Timberlake in the US famously took a selfie and got in trouble because he posted it on Instagram to millions and millions of followers. So is that, a, I suppose that would go across the border here too as a no-no? Yeah, there's certain things. For example, you can't actually use any a phone or a the legislation of telecommunications device, so a smartphone or an iPod, in a polling station at all okay. when you're inside. So that would include taking any sort of photos. Something else you're not allowed to do while you're in the polling location is actually discuss who you voted for. Sure. Yeah, so that's you you can wait okay. till you go outside, <laughs> but once when you're actually inside you can't give any indication for whom you voted for. So those are those are a couple things that people should be aware of. Um, is there anything else that would be a little less obvious? Or even how you fold it. Yeah, actually, well, this is it. Once it, when people go into the polling stations, they shouldn't be folding the oh. ballot all. You That's for early yeah, voters. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you voted early, Vicky, so you had a write-in ballot and had to put it in the box. But once people go to vote at the polling stations, we'll be using tabulation machines again this year, the yeah. same as 2014. Right. So those ballots go in. They can go in face up, face down, front or backwards. It doesn't really make any difference, but into the tabulation machine so definitely okay. don't fold your ballot um, there's a secrecy sleeve that you that the voters put it in so that uh, the workers and nobody else who happens to be around can actually see what's on your ballot um, you can use an X or a check mark as long as you keep your markings inside the circle okay. yeah. um, and speaking of the 2014 election there was a minor software hiccup with the tabulation system 
what happened and how have you dealt with it this time around? Yeah, absolutely. So without getting too complicated, because it is a little bit of a, a techie issue, but the the issue that occurred wasn't actually with the tabulation machines okay. themselves. Okay. It was with a uh, software that transferred the results okay. from the machines to a server farm and then the transfer of the results to Elections New Brunswick when we put them up on our website. So the data was being corrupted by this file transfer protocol. Okay. So once that was identified and they figured out what the problem was, they dealt with that. But in terms of going forward, we've done a number of things to avoid those issues um, in 2018. First of all, the, that particular fire uh, software has been replaced. And what was happening in 2014, the, the data, the results, were being transferred outside of the government, government of New Brunswick firewall and then back across that firewall, okay. and that was when the data was being corrupted. So everything will stay inside the government of New Brunswick firewall. And then with at head office, before we publish any results to the, the website, mm -hmm. there's a, a number of verification processes, both manual and automated, that the data will go through to make sure that the data isn't corrupted. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have the technical expertise I to understand <laughs> how it can verify, but it's the, the, the process does verify that the data is complete data before it goes up on the website. And is this a system that has yet to be adopted federally? It's sort of New Brunswick is pioneering it? Um, New Brunswick is definitely the first to have used the tabulation machines and a number of things. The, the federal government doesn't use um, tabulation machines. They are piloting at the next election some of the uh, technology at the polls that we use. I mean, when you vote in New Brunswick at a provincial election, you go in, the voters list is on a laptop, and it's, you know, your voter information card, which is very important. People bring that with them. They can be processed very quickly at the polls. It's a scanner, just like at the grocery store. You scan your card, you get a ballot, um, and you're struck off automatic, uh, off the compute, the list on the computer. The federal government is still using paper, pencil, rulers with reams of paper for the voters list. So they are going to be piloting that technology at, I think it's advanced polls at the next federal election, mm -hmm. but the tabulation machines we use are the same ones that Ontario used in their most recent provincial election, but we've been using them in New Brunswick at municipal elections since 2008 and since provincial at 2014. So Elections New Brunswick is really proud of the fact that we're very much a leader amongst the election management organizations in Canada for all of this type of technology, both the way we organize our workers at the polls, they call it the New Brunswick banker model, where you go in, you can get served more quickly than the technology. So we're really proud of Elections New Brunswick of the advances we've made and everybody else is following our example slowly but surely. So we're, we're quite proud of that. And even for my boyfriend to declare that I lived here on paper, it took five minutes. So that yeah. was very fast. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about your fake news awareness campaign, which is a very, very timely and modern issue that I'm sure you are the first to deal with? Yeah, we're, yeah, and as far as I know, within Canada at the very least, we're certainly the first election management body that's dealing with mm -hmm. the media manipulation and that sort of thing. Um, but in, on in quite a way. massive scale. Yeah, yeah, we're, we have um, television ads, um, we're on YouTube, I'm trying to think, we've got banner ads on, I believe it's perhaps over 280 websites. It's really, and it's really about making people aware that just because you see something on social media, you should really take a second to check it to see if it's true before you share it. Because what we've uh, learned mm -hmm. in looking into the matter a little further is when people see something that someone they know mm -hmm has shared or liked, they're more likely to trust it without giving it that second thought, think, hmm, is that really true? So before you sort of perpetuate uh, posts, mm -hmm. you know, Twitter, Facebook, wherever you might see it, that might be either intentionally misleading mm -hmm. or it might just be you know, misleading unintentionally, that take a moment to, to think about it. And our ads are intentionally kind of ridiculous about Bigfoot and mermaids mm. and that sort of thing, because it's something to grab people's attention. And of course, as the election body, we can't really be doing ads that have real potential content that 
you know, we need mm -hmm. to keep them sort of very light, and we wanted something that would catch people's attention. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, people are definitely talking about them, and we're proud that we've taken that sort of first step to think, okay. And I know some, some people might think, well, it's, you know, kind of mm -hmm. obvious, don't just go ahead and share things, but I know I've shared stories and when I realized, wait, I mean, a simple, I mean, poor Rowan Atkinson, Mr. Bean, I think has died about five times. And I have to admit, I contributed to the false spreading of poor Rowan Atkinson's death. And as far as I know, he's still alive, so. Now Facebook stateside is being more diligent about checking for face news, but do you, I don't know if you're, if you know if, when it comes to a Canadian election, if they're less in the know of what people are posting and less concerned, does that factor in at all? Facebook itself or? Facebook and Twitter, but Facebook specifically. Yeah. My understanding is that Facebook is being quite diligent in Canada as well. And that's, uh, that they're taking it seriously as well. It's not just in the States that they're taking steps. And I, I really can't speak to exactly what they're doing, but I do know that they've uh, reached out and they are, especially with the federal election coming up next year, they're taking steps, whatever the steps they're taking in the States, they're doing it similarly here in Canada. I mean, and outside of fake news, media in general now, a lot of stuff is, is put together really fast, isn't always properly fact-checked. Do you think that media coverage has to have the legislation changed for how we handle an election now that the internet era has become sort of the main, the main way we get our news? I don't know that legislation yeah is I don't think legislating the media is really the way to, to go. I think it's, the media itself has to, I mean, regulate, much like with mm -hmm. fake news, I think media plays a role. It be, and we say fake news, whether it's misinformation, disinformation, whatever you want to mm -hmm. call it, um, I think media plays a role in um, the fact checking on those as well, as well as themselves. So I don't know that legislation is necessarily the care. I think it's more just being more diligent. Mm -hmm. I, did, I suppose I wonder in the case of like a Donald Trump south of the border where when he's on Twitter, it is not, it's often not true. And if there are rules that need to be put in place for our politicians back home for what they use their social media platforms for during election season, especially since there's, um, there's a blackout on doing campaigning right before the election, but we still allow for the social media platforms to be used, so they are quite influential. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's really something that the parties have to, to address themselves as yeah. to how they want their candidates. I, I, once again, elections in New Brunswick, we don't, we don't police or monitor content. Mm -hmm. We didn't do it in traditional media. We're not going to do it in social media because that gets into okay. issues of free speech and that sort of thing. And that's really not the role for elections in New Brunswick. If the parties and candidates are concerned about what, or if the parties are concerned what their candidates are, mm -hmm. are saying, I think that's... A, for them to regulate internally. Um, what do you have the candidates in this particular election? What are sort of some of the rules and guidelines they have to follow in terms of campaigning uh, prior to the election? Yeah, absolutely. Um, most of the guidelines for candidates are, and the rules are really around how much they're allowed to spend. Yeah. Um, so there's, and it depends on the number of voters in the riding they're, they're running in. It's around $40,000 per candidate, plus then the parties have spending limits as well. Candidates aren't allowed to put any uh, posters, signs, campaign materials within 30 meters of an actual polling station. And that with polling stations are just those places where people vote on ordinary and advanced polling day. Um, there's certain requirements that needs to be clear on whose behalf uh, a poster or materials distributed. If it has the candidate's name on it, it doesn't require anything more than that, and the publisher, the uh, printer's name has to be on the material. So there's some things like that, but most of the controls are really around how much they're allowed to spend. Okay. How does someone find out if they are registered to vote? And if a member of the general public sees something that doesn't look right, is there a way to report it? Absolutely. Um, the easiest way to find out if you're registered to vote is to call our call center, one 858 vote and the call center there can check to see if you're on the list. Um, if you are already on the list, they can uh, verify your information to make sure that it's correct, you're still at the same address, that sort of thing. You can also go into your local returning office and they can help you out there as well. Once again, they can do the same things. Verify if you're on the list, add you to the list, verify your information. And you can also go to our website, electionsnb.ca. We have all kinds of additional information there that will help uh, electors know, you know, the when and where they're going to vote and that sort of thing. 
Um, do you have any indication of how many voters you think will come out this election? It's really, that's, it's, I'll be perfectly honest, there's no way of knowing what voter turnout is going to be like. You know, we hope we're ready and prepared for 100% voter turnout. Mm -hmm. Realistically, that has never happened, but we're prepared for every single eligible elector in New Brunswick to show up. So that's, that's our role in terms of what, there's really no way of knowing what voter turnout is gonna be like. It's really a lot of the time about the issues and whether people feel there's you know, something they feel strongly about. And what have been your biggest success stories this time around? This time around, I'd have to say our training of our returning officers and our staff, a lot of work for pretty much since the last election in 2014, a lot of work has gone into refining our training materials, our training processes. I have an exceptionally professional, knowledgeable, helpful staff at head office in Elections New Brunswick and Fredericton. Um, and they're there to help our returning officers as they're doing their job. And I'd say for me, that's one of the, the biggest successes so far. The biggest success for me will be if on September 25th, nobody is talking about Elections New Brunswick at all. The, the, the line we use in our training with our returning officers is don't be the headline. It should be Elections New Brunswick, nobody wants to talk about us on the day after the election. So I know you have a busy day ahead, you're off to St. George next, but do you have any final words for New Brunswickers on encouraging them to vote this election? Absolutely. The message I have is to get out and vote, exercise your democratic right. It's easy to do. You can go into your returning office and vote. You can show up at advance polls on September 15th or 17th or on election day on September 24th and exercise your right to vote. Uh, if you have any questions, call your local returning office and you can find out if you're on the list if you have any questions. Thank you so much, Kim, and thank you for my, so much for voting with me today. <laughs> thank you, Becky. Southwest Magazine is a news and public affairs production of CHCO-TV, New Brunswick's only source for independent community television.